Hi, this is Discussing Games and welcome to Does It Switch, a series of videos that seek to discover whether a ported game fits well with the Nintendo Switch. Each video will end with a simple yes or no to this question, and in this episode I'll be answering the question, does The Witcher 3 Complete Edition Switch? As an extra side note, for the purposes of any comparative analysis in these videos, I will not be considering mods, as not doing so is the only objective standard that is genuinely fair. The Witcher 3 is the final instalment of a trilogy of games developed by CD Projekt Red. The game follows a Witcher, Geralt, and his search for his de facto daughter, Cirilla. It takes place over an expansive and wide variety of open worlds, varying from the harsh climates of the Skellig Isles to the beautiful vistas of Toussaint. Throughout the game, players will battle with different monsters and men, complete Witcher's contracts, side quests, and this is where many have argued that The Witcher truly shines. Its dialogue, writing, and world building are second to none, and still to this day it is one of the best games that I have personally ever played. Equally, the character building and storytelling are so well designed that they completely draw most players in, and even lead to the formation of emotional bonds with the characters to an extent where you will truly care about the outcome of this wonderful story. The Witcher 3 is also incredibly expansive, and in the complete edition, players could easily spend upwards of 150 to 200 hours in this stunning game world. The game was originally released for consoles and PC on the 19th of May 2015, and needless to say, the game and its creators have been the industry darlings for the past five years. With the release of the TV show, the books and the games are now more popular than ever. Coming off the back of all this success, and with the release of the Nintendo Switch, some hoped for a re-release of the game on this new platform. However, due to its inferior hardware, most considered that this was unlikely. Despite this, valiantly, and to the joy of Witcher fans everywhere, myself included, Saber Interactive willingly took on the challenge and their Switch version of the game, lovingly nicknamed The Switcher, was released the 15th of October 2019. This video will analyse to what degree Saber succeeded, and it will do so by considering three categories. Graphics and performance, controls and unique features to the Switch version, and thus, without further ado, let's get on with the video. And here is how The Witcher 3 performs on Nintendo Switch. One hiccup, if it's even fair to call it that, would be playing the game in docked mode. To my mind, if this is the primary way that you plan to play the game, then I would suggest you buy it on another platform, unless this is unavailable to you, as the majority of the unique benefits of the Switch version are lost. The game still runs perfectly acceptably in docked mode, but the increased screen size that will inevitably result only serves to intensify any of the small graphical issues that the game has. However, should you own another platform, my assumption would be that you are planning to buy the game for its handheld capabilities, and in this mode, the game's merits are numerous. Frankly, it's astonishing what Saber have achieved on a system that has, in practical terms, the hardware capabilities similar to that of the previous generation of consoles. Although the game is obviously not as graphically intense as the original version, it does stand up well, particularly with the correct settings enabled. Unlike the original, the Switch release provides far more options in post-processing following patch 3.6, which has removed issues of blur and a lack of polish that the game had prior to this. The new patch allows the player to optimise their experience, and this is far more necessary in this version of the game due to the reduced capability of the hardware. The options available to the player allow them to determine what settings they feel make the game look at its best, and thus to optimise this version of the game to whatever they personally want. This level of optimization was only available on the PC version of the game, which provides the Switch Edition with a leg up on its console counterparts. The settings that I've been using have made the game look very nice, and not far from the base console versions. Here is a graphic of the settings that I've been using for the game, and I'll leave this here for a few seconds if you'd like to copy it. Some players have chosen to turn anti-aliasing off, however, doing so may leave you with flicker and more visible pixels on the screen, which to me, and to many others, is quite visually off-putting. In terms of performance, the frame rate throughout did not have many issue areas, and particularly with the settings as they are, there is a significant improvement for performance from the previous patch. Frame rates very rarely dip far enough to be noticeable, and a steady 20 to 30 FPS is par for the course. Despite this, high density areas such as Novograd and Oxenfur will consistently result in dips in frame rates, although this is never to an unacceptable level, but rather towards the lower end of the game's average FPS rate. For more information on the game's performance, Digital Foundry have an excellent video which I'll link to above. Next up, we have controls. It's needless to say that playing The Witcher Docked with a Pro Controller or both Joy-Cons is a very similar experience to that of the PC or console version of the game. However, the Switch's unique benefit is the ability to play it either on the light or in the handheld mode of the original console. It is of course here where the Switch really stands out. With a few adjustments to the controller settings, namely switching to the alternative quick access menu mode and making movement response alternative, the feeling of the Witcher in handheld mode is much more comfortable. 
The layout of the buttons for the most part is very intuitive and players who've played The Witcher before on either consoles or PC will very quickly feel at home here. Equally, the availability of touch controls can also be very useful in specific situations such as in dialogue, but particularly in navigating the menus of the game. Using this here genuinely serves to negate the long-held discontent with The Witcher 3's inventory management, which many argue was clearly designed with PC as opposed to console gaming in mind. Touchscreen controls in these circumstances, however, are far more user-friendly, as well as less laggy, and easier to complete, meaning the player can pick the menu option much faster and get back to actually playing the game. This is one additional incentive to play the game on Switch, but also one to play in handheld mode, as it provides an ease of usage. I would highly recommend that players familiarise themselves with using the menus in this manner, as, throughout the length of the game, they will save a lot of time, as well as a lot of frustration by manipulating this option. My only complaint from this perspective would be that some of the icons are a little bit small, and players, particularly those with eyesight problems, may struggle a bit. However, I'm not sure that this can be remedied due to the small size of the Switch's screen. Finally, we have the Switch's last unique benefit comparative to its console counterparts, and it is a perfect bit of utilitarian design for the console. The ability to utilise cloud saves from Steam and good old games is a very welcome addition for PC players who may wish to play both at home and on the move as the version's cross-platform compatibility allows this playstyle. Moreover, players who have played a great deal of the game on the PC can now, should they desire to, swap over to the Switch and use this platform either primarily or in convergence with their PC copy. For example, players can now take the game with them on holiday or play during their commute. The only catch to this edition is that PC players must also have all available DLCs and extras downloaded as well as the Switch version to be able to use the cloud saving feature. This edition is a commendable step forward from the PlayStation and Xbox versions of the game and fits perfectly with the on-the-go style of the system. The Witcher 3 on Switch is an achievement in ports and Saber Interactive ought to be praised for their excellent work. The Switcher is the most user-friendly experience available to console players and graphically, it's a miracle how well the game performs, particularly in consideration of the hardware that Sabre were working with. The game's performance remains steady throughout its 150 hour runtime, and on top of this, this version of the game has made advancements beyond the PlayStation and Xbox versions through enabling touch controls to ease infantry management as well as cloud saves, which allows for excellent compatibility with the PC version. All in all, to answer this video's question, yes, The Witcher 3 does switch, and it switches well. Thank you very much for watching my video. This is my first in what I plan to make a series of videos asking whether a game switches. If you enjoyed this episode of Does It Switch and would like to see more in this series, please like the video and feel free to subscribe to my channel for video game analysis, critiques and reviews of this kind. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons whose support I really, really appreciate. Thanks again for watching and until next time, see you later.